The Norbertine Order was founded in France on Christmas Day in 1121 by St. Norbert. Today the order has some 1,500 priests called canons and 300 nuns called canonesses worldwide. In January 2011, some 890 years after its founding, the Norbertines welcomed the first North and South American canonesses into its order, a journey started by five women who wished to follow the Norbertine dedication to the liturgical life of choir office and mass. The nine women took solemn professions in a ceremony at St. John's Cathedral in Fresno. The vow ceremony welcomed the nuns who belonged to the Diocese of Fresno and live on a 476-acre monastery located some five miles above the town of Tehachapi at 5,500 feet in the Tehachapi Mountains. The cloistered women's order received its blessing of establishment from the Vatican, the Norbertine Order, and Fresno Bishop John T. Steinbach. The new Norbertine Sisters of the Bethlehem Priory of St. Joseph, dubbed the Sisters of the Mountains, currently house a total of 20 nuns and lead a cloistered life at their Tehachapi location. They will join some 72,000 nuns of various orders in the United States, giving of themselves to God. The monastery is led by Mother Mary Augustine, a dynamic 71-year-old nun originally from New Caledonia, who is one of the five original nuns who started the movement to establish the order in the Americas. The Sisters' Monastery is a thriving farm with a menagerie of animals. Help them live day to day and support their cottage industries enterprises. In the fall, before the holidays, they were busy making and shipping holiday wreaths all over the country. Due to the limitation of time to make the wreaths, they are at their limit of 1,000. The Sisters are a happy group of 20 nuns representing five continents and their backgrounds. Sister Mary Norbert was once an attorney. That I was, uh, you could say, an overachiever uh, when I was younger in, in school and um, grew up with a wonderful family, wonderful Catholic upbringing. Um, but the world was very influential to me and uh, a lot of um, messages that were said especially to a woman at this time in the I'm one of a, a later vocation, so to speak. So uh, growing up in the 70s and 80s, it was, you're a woman and you can do it all and you can do everything a man can do and all these things. So um, all these things were playing into um, where I was heading and I thought I was going to be the first woman president of the United States. So I was going to get involved in politics, of course, and help to change the world. Um, I still remember as a young girl, I think I was about four or five, thinking all I wanted to do was to, to do good and be good and help to change things. Um, not thinking about a religious vocation. But um, went to school and I excelled in school and I um, um, got my undergraduate degree in accounting and my, um, uh, my law degree and I was a lawyer for, for 10 years before I entered the convent. The nuns must eat and the head chef is a young woman from New Jersey. She has been a nun for eight years and never started out to be a nun or even a Catholic? Well, I actually converted to the Catholic faith while I was at college. I went to, um, I went to Princeton University first, um, and I was Protestant, but I came to a fuller appreciation of um, the Catholic faith, and so I converted while I was there. And then I decided um, that I wanted a deeper experience of, of the living that Catholic faith and knowing more about it. So I transferred to Thomas Aquinas College in California. Um, and part of my thought in going there was that uh, that would be a good place to find a good Catholic husband. <laughs> but I found a really good husband <laughs> in um, Christ as my spouse. Um, I came to realize that really I was being called to um, the consecrated life. Sister Mary Otis Day is not always in the kitchen. She has academic aspirations and a fondness for cows. Well, actually, I'm studying for my, I'm almost, um, I've almost completed my master's degree in theology um, through Catholic Distance University. So that's my side job. <laughs> and then on um, one day a week, we, when 
Chris, the um, animal caretaker, when, the farmer, when he has his day off, then I help milk the animals. And I think that's most of my jobs right now. <laughs> Chris Avila is the monastery's farm manager who takes care of the heavy loading and milking of the farm's five cows and 20 goats that produces the basic ingredients for the proposed cheese producing plan in the next few years. The cheese chef is a young nun from Iowa who knew nothing about cheese until she joined the Norbertines, Sister Mary Maximilian. I knew nothing about cheese before I came here. Um, in the summer, it's almost every day because we have so much more milk with the cows. But in the winter, when certain cows are pregnant, we're not getting as much milk like right now. Then it might only be a couple times a week. So the milk comes up in three gallon totes. We fill up the walls of the cheese vat with water and that's what heats up the milk inside. When it gets to a certain temperature, depending on what kind of cheese we're making, then we'll add the starter culture, different bacteria for the different cheeses. And after that has time to work, maybe about 45 minutes to an hour, we'll add the rennet, which sets it into a curd. Um, and then we'll cut the curd and Depending on the cheese, you might stir it for 45 minutes to an hour, and as the curd heats up, it shrinks and the whey comes out. So this is a pepper jack. This is a jalapeno farmhouse cheddar with cayenne. That's why it's a little bit more orange. The darker orangish colored cheeses are summer cheeses because the cows are eating on grass, and that's what gives the, the milk an orange or color. So this would be a winter cheese because they're not eating as much grass. One of the cottage enterprises initiated by the nuns is making robes for priests. The beautiful chasubles are all hand-sewn by Mother Augustine and her apprentice sister seamstresses. I learned with my mother to sew, but I never learned, never learned really to make vestment. When I come here, uh, I believe it's a priest who told me one day you should make vestment, and I say, well, I don't know make vestment, but he gave me a a sample and uh, because I knew to sew then I could figure how to do that. And uh, in the past I have also been a framer. Then I used to to find something um, to match a color to match or uh, to have a kind of artistic way not to paint or something like that but to be able to design something the canonesses coming together from all over the world and many parts of the U.S. are taking on new duties they never experienced in their previous lives, like Sister Mary Emily, a native Californian, who cares for the monastery's calves and goats. The daily life at the monastery is not centered on attending to the animals, making wreaths or cheese, but the solemn and reverent celebration of the sacred liturgy and the adulation of the Blessed Mother. The Norbertine sisters start their day at midnight. Our day starts, um, so to speak, our day at midnight, with midnight prayer, midnight mans. St. Norbert, um, when he founded the order, really embraced the monastic tradition. So we have a lot of monastic traditions that we embrace, and one of those is the midnight office. So we wake at 1145 and have about an hour of prayer, except on feast days it could be a little bit longer. So from about midnight till about 1, prayer, and we go back to sleep. We wake up at 520 and we have our little breakfast, and then we have our morning prayer, lots. And after that, we have um, our chapter and uh, reading the martyrology every day. And Mother gives us a little talk and exhortation um, about spiritual matters. And right now, as we're preparing for a solemn profession, she's um, talking a lot about things that relate specifically to the vows, which is very good. And then um, after that, we have our mid-morning prayer, and then we have exposition of, of the Blessed Sacrament. And we have prayer um, before the Blessed Sacrament um, it, together in common um, for about an hour before Mass. Then we have our Holy Mass. Um, and after that, we have our work period. In the morning, our work period is not very long. So it's about 10 to 11.30. And then we um, come back for prayer. The bell's going to ring shortly for, at 11.35 for our midday prayer sext, followed by the Rosary, the Angelus, and the Rosary. And then we have our midday meal. After that, we come back and processing in um, chanting um, a psalm, Psalm 50, the Miserere, as we process back into the choir, and then we have our mid-afternoon prayer sext. And then after that, we have silence for about an hour. It's a grand silence where the sisters can rest or take a walk or read spiritual reading, pray. 
And then uh, from 2.30 to 5, about, we have our another work period. So there's not a lot of work during work time during the day because our life is prayer. The bell rings at 5.15, and then we have our evening prayer, Vespers. And um, after Vespers, we pray together again um, in common, Lexio Divina, which is essentially reading the scripture and praying with the scripture, meditating with scripture for about an hour before our meal, our supper meal. And then after our supper meal, every day we have recreation for an hour where the sisters, because our, our day is in quiet in general, we can talk if we need to. But um, then every day from 7 to 8, there, um, we have recreation where all the sisters get together and have the opportunity to talk freely about things, etc. And then we have our um, evening prayer, um, not evening prayer, I'm sorry, Compline after that. And then we have Grand Silence where the sisters, again, there's no talking after, after that time. So 9 o'clock, lights are out go to bed for a few hours and then wake up for matins again. Norbertine Canonesses at Tehachapi are sponsored by St. Michael's Abbey in Orange County. Each week a canon from St. Michael's Abbey travels to Tehachapi to say mass and provide spiritual counseling. Father Theodore Smith was an electrical engineer in his former life. Before I entered I got a degree from Cal State Long Beach in electrical engineering. When I was in college I made a big mistake. I started praying. You never know where, where you're going to go when you start praying. I had come from a Catholic background, but, uh, but I wasn't really, I would say, a convinced Catholic, you know, at that point, and got interested in the question of evolution. And uh, so I started reading the Bible to find out what the church's take was on evolution. And uh, through doing that, I uh, came, uh, well, I had kind of a conversion, and, and then I started praying, you see, and then, and then the more I prayed, the better uh, uh, idea of priestly vocation seemed. Father Smith emphasized the importance of the Norbertine sisters to the Abbey. Very important, and the, we, the reason uh, that I can say that is because uh, of the commitment that our Abbey has made to, to help the sisters uh, in their uh, in getting founded and to provide uh, spiritual assistance to them. So there's always a priest here and the sisters have never gone without Mass in the 10 years that they've been here. The Tehachapi site was selected for the monastery because it fits the silence, solitude, and separation necessary to protect the integrity of the contemplative life. Visitors are welcome to visit and spend spiritual time at the monastery in Bethany House, a basic necessities bungalow on the grounds, providing the perfect retreat environment and attend the separated chapel with the sisters. Visitors can also stop at the gift shop and select from a wide variety of handmade articles. Several items that are made by the sisters here at the monastery um, are homemade biscotti, jams, um, our peanut butter spread. We also have cards, gift cards that are made by the sisters, um, framed images. We do framing and printing here. And the aprons that are made by the sisters, um, as well as apothecary items, creams, salve, lip balm, soaps. And we also have the greeting cards that the sisters um, do the artwork on, as well as the printing. Um, we have carry holy cards, um, books on various subjects, and last but not least, um, rosaries. Um, single decades and full decades that are made by the sisters. And we have especially um, Job's Tears rosaries that we grow the Job's Tears from our greenhouse, which you may have seen. The sisters of the monastery must sustain themselves through their cottage industry projects and donations, pay for the general living expenses by patrons who support the Norbertine life. The Norbertine life and day is devoted to the Blessed Mother. At least eight hours of every day is spent in prayer. Their profession, I renounce the world. I promise a conversion of my ways and life in community, especially in poverty, consecrated chastity, 
and obedience. First of all, it might be not exactly what you imagine or what you expect. We all come in with certain expectations about what it might be like and what it is like. Um, and I think that's the gift is that you don't know all, everything about it at the beginning because um, it really is a school of growth. And you don't know exactly how God is going to mold you and change you at the beginning. But um, to be open to his grace, to be open to his, um, what he wants to do with you, because the life truly is, it's a blessing in so many respects. And you have the opportunity to, to truly give your life totally to God in a way that you can't do it in the world. There's so many, I think, young women in the world that would like to give their lives totally to God, but you can't because there's so many distractions. You know, it's, it's not, um, the religious way of life is truly a gift in many respects because it does provide you with an environment where you really, truly can give your life totally to God. I have to say I'm, I've never regretted for one moment that I've uh, come here and I just more and more deeply appreciate my vocation as time goes on. Each canonesses announces her religious professions to the abbot general and those present and signs the profession written in her hand at the altar. She then receives a ring of espousal to Jesus Christ. Dear daughters, what do you ask of God and his holy church? The mercy of God and yours, Father, and a membership in the Bethlehem Priory of St. Joseph. Thanks be to God. I renounce the world and property, and I promise obedience, chastity, poverty, and life in community. I, Sister Mary Emily, Valerie Valdez, offer and dedicate myself to the Church of the Immaculate Virgin Mary and St. Joseph of Bethlehem. And I promise a conversion of my ways and life in community, especially in poverty, consecrated chastity and obedience, according to the gospel of Christ and the apostolic way of life, according to the rule of St. Augustine, and the constitutions of the canonesses regular of the Order of Pre Montre, in the presence of the Most Reverend Thomas Anton Hungrottinger, Abbot General, and of the Sisters.
receive this ring for you. Before to the eternal king, keep face with your bright so that you may come to the wedding feast of the eternal joy. This true women's solidarity and love is already anticipated the new community of Jerusalem of one heart and one mind devoted to the common life, having all things in common. Dear sisters, may you become more and more sisters in unity, in faith, in the sincerity of the heart. And so we hope and pray for your living together with the words which Boaz used in this meeting with Ruth. May the Lord reward what you are doing for one another. As a faithful, blessed community of sisters, may you all receive a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you are come for to refuge from this day for your perpetual solemn vows. Dear sisters, today the Lord stands before you. Look at you and says, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for him. So I wish you this confidence, this faith, this great trust and dedication in his word, in his presence. St. Norbert, pray for us. Blessed Riquera, pray for us. And all saints and blessed of our order, pray for us. And for this newly erected community of Canoneses. With the vows taken at the solemn professions, the canonesses will now enter into enclosure where they separate themselves from the outside world. Family, friends, and visitors will only make contact through a screened partition. To continue an historical journey they began some 10 years ago to honor the sacred liturgy and the Blessed Mother. <laughs>